Dr. John Mulliken is a leading pediatric plastic surgeon whose work on the advancement of techniques and understanding of cleft lip and palate repair, craniofacial reconstruction, and vascular anomalies has impacted the lives of children worldwide. Born and bred in America's Midwest, he attended Princeton University, graduating magna cum laude. He earned his medical degree from Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons and completed general surgical residency at Massachusetts General Hospital. He served two years in the U.S. Army as commander of the 43rd MASH unit in Korea. He later trained in plastic surgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital before returning to New England at Boston's Children's Hospital. Dr. Mulliken pioneered the field of vascular anomalies, authoring a landmark paper on cellular differences. It is the most cited article in plastic surgical literature and the basis for the field's widely accepted classification system. He also co-wrote the core textbook in the field and is the co-founder of the International Society for the Study of Vascular Anomalies. Dr. Mulliken is recognized for developing and refining techniques for the repair of unilateral and bilateral cleft lip. His surgical and masterful expertise in the correction of birth defects is widely sought by families throughout the world. Highly regarded as an influential teacher, Dr. Mulliken is known for cultivating a sense of wonder in students, residents, and fellows at Harvard Medical School. His devotion to his patients, commitment to the highest standards of excellence, and continual self-improvement has inspired countless trainees, scholars, and visiting surgeons. Currently, he is professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School, director of the Craniofacial Center, and co-director of the Vascular Anomaly Center at Boston Children's Hospital. Deeply committed to providing personal care, Dr. Mulliken still works a full clinical schedule seeing patients six days a week, and publishing in surgical and scientific journals. The 2015 National Physician of the Year Award for Lifetime Achievement, Dr. John Mulliken. As my mentor, Dr. Judah Folkman, often said, after that introduction, I can hardly wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> I thank Dr. Adam Coker for submitting my name to Castle Connolly. Mr. John Castle and Dr. John Connolly for saving my place when I could not attend last year. Thanks Stuart Diamond for that, producing that video. I don't know where it came from. Thanks to, to Dr. Jean Morgan for the biographical sketch. And I'm delighted this evening to, to share this, this time with my, with two classmates, with, with one classmate from PNS, Larry Rappaport and his wife Karen and two colleagues from PNS, Dr. Maria Garzon and Dr. June Wu. Also want to thank Ms. Marley Warman, who I haven't seen since she was about five years old, who is the daughter of one of my colleagues, and she's taking care of my daughter tonight to try to keep her uh, stimulated by her iPhone. <laughs> we, just had a, we just had a diaper emergency, that's why she had to step out. <clears throat> Also, of course, have to thank my mentors, Dr. Judah Folkman, father of angiogenesis, Dr. Paul Tessier, father of craniofacial surgery, and Dr. Joseph Murray, father of kidney transplant, uh, solid organ transplantation, and Nobel laureate in 1990. With teachers such as this, anyone with a modicum of intelligence and ambition couldn't help but succeed. I didn't know much about this award and how it was arrived at until tonight. Nevertheless, it has a greater reach than I had never ever appreciated. Two weeks ago, I received phone calls and messages from classmates and colleagues across the country congratulating me upon seeing my photograph in the New York Times. <clears throat> Allow me a minute to reflect on what I've learned at this juncture in my life. Howard Thurman, an African-American theologian and civil rights activist, said there are only two questions in the adult life to be answered. The first is, where am I going? And the second is, who will go with me? And if you get these questions in the wrong order, you will be in trouble. I've always been passionate about my work, but I couldn't find that special someone to go with me, so I just kept going and kept going and going. I married for the first time seven years ago at the age of three score and 10, Okay. 
Is that you clapping because you could calculate what that meant? <laughs> we married a few blocks away to St. Patrick's. Now I'm the first time father of a four-year-old daughter named Olivia, who's here tonight. My bliss is fully credited to the love of my life and Olivia's mother, Dr. Portia Chu, also a plastic surgeon. Portia, would you stand for us, please? <clears throat> I'm in a stage when my colleagues are retiring and enjoying weekend play with their grandchildren. I continue to work full time, but do my best to return home to early as I can to read a bedtime story to Olivia. As I watch her sleeping, all the papers I've written are only minor monuments to immortality. They seem to shrink into insignificance. Nothing I could ever create would equal this extraordinary new life. I admit it's difficult to get up from the floor after playing tea party with Olivia. <laughs> Some of you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I can tell you about some special physical therapy you can do to work on that. <laughs> Being a late in life father has altered the way I think about my little patients. I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I want, I, I want to tell you, I, I admit it's difficult to getting up from playing with Olivia. But as Joseph Campbell, American mythologist, observed, I don't feel like an old man. I just feel like a young man and was something wrong with him. Being a late in life father has altered the way I think about my little patients. I've always practiced the golden rule of pediatrics. Treat the child as if he or she were your own. And I've always felt sympathy for parents of a sick child. But now as a parent myself, I feel a deeper sense of empathy, particularly if the child has a facial birth defect. Thank you again, Castle Connolly, for this incredible honor. <laughs> 